Thousands upon thousands of UFO sightings are reported to governments around the globe every year. And not all can be explained away as weather phenomena or military exercises. UFO encounters occur in broad daylight and moonlight. But some places report more sightings than others. And people from around the world flock to them just for the chance to catch a glimpse of a flying saucer. Is this a coincidence? Or are these hotspots actually attracting visitors from other worlds? And if so, why? These are the Alien Disclosure Files. Among UFO enthusiasts, Chile is often considered the country with the highest number of UFO sightings. Its low humidity levels and even lower light pollution make viewing celestial events easy. The Chilean government openly and actively investigates credible UFO sightings and regularly releases their findings to the public. But in 2014, even the government was stumped by what their own Navy helicopter captured on its radar screen. Chile is actually becoming a UFO hotspot, and partly because their government doesn't act like they have all the answers about what's flying in the skies. Fun fact, they also do not blacklist their citizens for telling their truths. Uh, Chile has put out some videos. Uh, apparently, there's a lot of activity in Chile, and, and their records are, are wide open from the research I've done. I believe there was an incident where some of their helicopters uh, caught a cigar-shaped UFO on tape, and that's one of the best military footage of a UFO that's out there now. In 2014, a Chilean Navy helicopter was conducting a routine patrol along the coast of the Pacific Ocean when it captured an intriguing image on its sophisticated radar equipment. During their patrol, their helicopter detected a strange object that was larger than normal, and it had a lot of strange characteristics to it. For nearly 10 minutes, the Navy pursued and recorded the UFO's flight patterns. It was caught on camera, venting some sort of vapor. It's not unusual for an aircraft to release some kind of vapor, but it's usually at a higher altitude, like 30,000 feet, but this thing release some kind of gas at just 4,000 feet. The footage was sent to the government for analysis, which took two years to complete. In 2017, they released their findings. Maybe while the Chilean Navy was analyzing its flight pattern and composition, it was doing the same to it. Was this why a UFO was flying so close to the military helicopter? After a full two years of investigating, using experts from around the globe, it still could not identify the object, and it remains a mystery to this day. A year before the Navy recorded the unusual visitor flying in the skies off the coast of Chile, a group of copper miners spotted a similar object hovering above them in a remote part of northern Chile. Some even managed to snap a few photos. So what was really cool about the Kalawasi copper mine incident is that it happened in the daytime. So anybody that was looking up could actually see this thing. So there are actually tons of eyewitnesses. Witnesses describe seeing a series of bright lights in the sky, along with unusual movements and behaviors, unlike any aircraft they were aware of. The lights seem to change colors, hover, and make sudden, rapid movements. As with the Navy incident, the Chilean government investigated and could not rule out the possibility of extraterrestrial origin. It could, however, rule out meteorological events, balloons, and military aircraft. It is still classified as a UAP. Chile is certainly one of the world's hotspots for UAP sightings, going back to one of the first modern sightings in 1965. That sighting actually left behind physical evidence in the form of burnt grass and soil. 
UAP hotspots may be defined by an above average concentration of sightings and experiences over time. And researchers often look for patterns in these locations. But Chile isn't the only UAP hotspot in the world. Puerto Rico, Brazil, Japan, Russia, China, and the United States lead the world in reported UAP sightings. Is there a correlation or pattern? Certain UAP hotspots do seem to occur near bodies of water, mountains, or areas of unique electromagnetic properties. These factors might be significant, although more research will be needed to establish any definitive correlations. Other theories include advanced military technology as reasons why aliens might concentrate their visitations to certain areas. But for a definitive answer as to why these hotspots are alien destinations, it might help to capture an alien and ask. And maybe we already have. Certain places on this planet are known to attract an above average number of UFO sightings. These places are known as hotspots. Chile might be among the most popular, especially when the Chilean Navy captured detailed video of a possible UAP. But Chile isn't the only country with sophisticated radar and video equipment pointed toward the skies and seas. Another hotbed for UAP sightings, Puerto Rico, has caught many weirdly shaped objects flying in their airspace and below their waters. So many incidents have occurred that the term USO is often used. UAPs are in the air. USOs are in the sea. In this video, US Customs and Border Protection aircraft spotted an unidentified object over the Mona Passage, the stretch of water between Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic. The object exhibited unconventional flight patterns, including low altitude maneuvers and hovering. It seemed to be moving without any visible propulsion system, defying the characteristics of conventional aircraft. The object eventually descended toward the water and appeared to submerge itself, continuing its movement beneath the surface. This behavior was particularly unusual and captured the attention of the patrolling agents. The crew on board the aircraft managed to capture video footage of the object's movements. The video shows a dark, oval-shaped object flying over the water and eventually entering the ocean. The quality of the video was relatively clear, and the object's behavior defied conventional explanations. When it comes to the Aguadilla UFO video footage, um, it was analyzed by a lot of different enthusiasts and experts in the field of ufology, and uh, it sparked a lot of debate out there. It's like, you know, what is it that we're looking at here? Is this a, a drone, experimental aircraft, or USO? The incident remains a subject of interest for both UAP enthusiasts and researchers who are intrigued by the possibility of encountering unconventional aerial phenomena. Puerto Rico might be a recent hotspot for UAP encounters because of the Arecibo Observatory, located in a dense, unpopulated area of the island. The Arecibo Observatory, it's a large radio telescope that's located near a small town in Arecibo, Puerto Rico. Now, in 1974, Carl Sagan decided to create a message that could be transmitted into space as part of a ceremonial uh, message and event to mark a major upgrade to the telescope. The Arecibo message was composed in a binary code consisting of a sequence of ones and zeros. It was designed to be understandable by potential extraterrestrial recipients who might possess a basic understanding of mathematics and science. The message included a key for understanding the message, followed by a DNA sequence a diagram of the human body, humanity's location in our solar system, and a picture of the Arecibo radio itself. 25 years later, 
across the Atlantic Ocean, we might have received an answer. The Chiboltan Observatory crop circle that appeared in 2001 near the Chiboltan Observatory in Hampshire, England, is absolutely one of the most famous and absolutely intriguing crop circles associated with potential extraterrestrial communication. I mean, it appears to resemble a response to the Arecibo message that Carl Sagan put out. The crop circle depicted a humanoid figure that bore a resemblance to a figure in the Arecibo message. However, there were notable differences, such as the number of limbs, Puerto Rico continues to be a hotspot for alien activity, both in the skies and in the water. To convert more skeptics to UFO believers, there's going to have to be more physical evidence. We're going to have to see some of this exotic material that people keep talking about. The military footage from the Navy is very good. There's radar to go along with it, but as far as the scientific community goes and the people that just aren't believers, they're actually gonna have to see either pieces of this metal that has been examined by scientists and confirmed that it is of non-human origins or some of these alleged craft vehicles that are non-human in origin. Declassifying documents and admitting they don't know every object that flies through their airspace is one thing. Admitting to alien life is another. It's a secret governments might kill to protect. The smartphone has turned anyone into an internet reporter. Videos and pictures of UFO encounters are increasing. Perhaps that's the reason more and more governments are openly reporting UFO sightings. In the United States, Congress has had several televised meetings about the subject and has admitted to having an active committee investigating reports. But government cooperation hasn't always been the case. One of the most famous alleged alien encounters in Brazil is the Varjina incident. In January of 1996, reports emerged of a strange creature being spotted by multiple witnesses in the city of Varjina, Minas Gerais. The creature was described as resembling a small humanoid being with red eyes and rough brownish skin. On January 13, 1996, reported an object entering the atmosphere 200 miles northeast of Sao Paulo in Brazil and later crashed in a town named Varginha. The Brazilian Air Force flew over the crash site. Several people reported witnesses they witnessed a UAP struggling to stay in the air at about 300 feet and it eventually crashed violently into the ground. At the scene of the crash, it was clear that the metals from the, what appeared to be a spacecraft that was unusual because it changed shapes. This is what they said. One of the most widely circulated aspects of the Varjina incident is the alleged involvement of a local hospital. It is claimed that some of the creatures were taken to the Hospital Humanitas for examination and treatment. Witnesses reported seeing military personnel guarding the hospital and some individuals claim to have seen unusual medical procedures being carried out on the creatures. There were no bodies found at the crash scene. Military policemen Eric Lopez and Marco Cherez were patrolling the area. They saw a four foot tall brown creature with bright red eyes running across the street. They put in their report. Marco Cherez was able to grab the creature and he took it to a local hospital. The creature died on arrival. Two weeks later, 
Marco died of a unknown cause. Could it have been some type of contamination? Could it have been disease? We don't know. The Varjina incident is probably the most famous UFO encounter in Brazil and has spawned documentaries and movies on the subject. Even the United States government confirmed there was something that crashed in the town. Those involved in the Varjina incidents continue to discuss the topic to this day. The advent of social media has also played a role, especially for UFO incidents reported in the last 20 years. Now, specifically talking about Brazil, the Vila Velha UFO. The Sao Paulo UFO and the Northeast Brazil UFO wave were all shared all over the internet, all over social media. It's just so fast and so easy, but when that happens, sometimes the wrong information can get out there and it's hard to believe everything that you hear and see. But perhaps because information can be shared so easily, governments are becoming more and more open to investigating credible UFO incidents. Some countries and towns are using their UFO acceptance to drive tourism and in the process, become the alien capital of the world. UFO sightings are higher than ever. The 1940s and 50s are often thought of as the golden age for UFOs and abductions. But advanced technology, social media, and smartphones have made present day the UFO champion. Ongoing research and projects focused on investigating UAP hotspots involves a combination of academic, government, and private initiatives. Declassifying government records can lead to credibility UAP sightings, especially when they come from reputable sources such as military personnel or government agencies. Fortunately, UFO sightings are no longer considered wildly taboo or too outrageous to discuss. Uh, so people can share about their experiences rather openly and even some communities are marketing themselves towards the UFO community. And one such place is Fukushima, Japan. Fukushima is promoting itself as a home to aliens and hoping to rebrand after a devastating earthquake put a spotlight directly on it. Fukushima, Japan. Now, if you've heard of this tiny community, it is most likely because of the powerful earthquake that happened just off the coast of Japan that caused a horrific nuclear meltdown in 2011. And that meltdown, unfortunately, it was the biggest nuclear disaster since Chernobyl. But now Fukushima is gaining international recognition for another reason, its pursuit of extraterrestrials. The town and surrounding area has been home to hundreds of reported UFO sightings over the years. In 2021, Fukushima opened the International UFO Lab, which collects and investigates UFO reports from around the world. Now, Japan is a hotbed for UFO activities and sightings, but the International UFO Lab doesn't just investigate encounters within its borders, but any unusual reports from any country, including the United States and CIA documents. The sole purpose of the lab is to collect and analyze information on UFO sightings. On display at the lab are numerous CIA documents about UFO sightings, including a 1969 document about the U.S. president witnessing shiny objects in the sky nearby. But Japan is home to their own hotspot of UFO activities. Some date back more than 200 years. In February of 1803, a Japanese fisherman saw an object bobbing up and down in the ocean. When the fisherman investigated further, he finds he had stumbled across an Utsurobune, or hollow boat. According to legend, this fisherman 
finds ordinary items in the hollowed out boat like bed sheets, water, bread, meat, those types of things. But he also found a woman. The woman with pale white skin, it was written, did not speak Japanese and could not communicate with anyone in the village. Her boat contained unusual symbols that no one had seen before. Now, there are theories about where this woman came from. I mean, the strange symbols on her boat, her unusual appearance might point to extraterrestrial origins. The villagers marveled at the woman's boat, which appeared to have been engineered using technology unimaginable by the fishing village. It was constructed of some sort of heavy metal and glass. As many as 70% of all UFO sightings can be traced to a handful of hotspots around the globe. Prevailing theories about why extraterrestrial beings might be drawn to specific locations include uh, natural resources, geological features, uh, historical significance, or cultural importance to ancient civilizations. And larger populations don't always mean there are more UFO sightings. Reported alien encounters at hotspots vary widely, and there are no universally recurring patterns. With more governments investigating UFO sightings, we are certain to see UFO sightings increase. And with more people speaking up, more video being taken, more articles being written, and more whistleblowers coming forward, we are closer than ever to answering the question, are we alone, with an emphatic no.